of four. Organization. Wrapping up the big... Keep it steady, cause you win and you lose some. I've been running since the day I was born. I'm still working on my style. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? I'm glad. And welcome, to, oh, welcome back to Book and Podcast, where we talk about life, the universe, and everything in between. This week, we're not really talking really about any of that besides life. Yeah. So. Yeah, um, not really any pop culture stuff this week. Yeah, because also with everything going on in the world, we wanted to focus on how you can love yourself and how you can love and respect other people. Yeah. Like what we were saying every, at the end of every single episode. Yeah. Whether you listen to our podcast and also if you watch our YouTube channel, we always say at the end of every single episode because that's what we stand for. That's how we are. Yeah. And, but yeah, so you want to start? Sure. I mean, yeah, like we wanted to talk about this because it is like it's Pride Month and with everything else going on, especially in the U.S. right now, um, there's just a lot of hate out there. People yeah. are very hateful, and it's it's really sad. So, and even if some people that aren't trying to be hateful are being very hateful, they're not like opening up their eyes to like respect other people and respect like their viewpoints and like maybe the things they've gone through and things like that. Exactly. So we we just wanted to talk about different ways you can kind of educate yourself and and become better at understanding other people without judging them and better at understanding yourself and how you should treat yourself yeah because really when it comes down to it some of the most intolerant and mean spirited people i've known did not love themselves they they suffered with mental illness and things like that and instead of taking care of themselves first they took that out on other people yeah they would make fun of other people and get angry at other people just because of their viewpoints and you know that's not right no um because sometimes people have good reason for i mean even if what they believe in seems extremely wrong they might have the, they might not believe in it because they're mean-spirited they might believe in it because that's just what they're used to and that's what they've always known they don't know anything else yeah so you know it's not right to judge people <laughs> just because of what they believe or yeah and like what so sexual orientation or what religion or what color the skin is yeah it's based on how they are as a person yeah and i i had talks like that a lot with a friend i used to have where they would they would just be like oh did you hear what so-and-so said or, or did you hear what the celebrity said or did and it's like oh they're so disgusting they're horrible people and i would always say like well maybe they're not maybe that happened you know okay that happened a couple years ago maybe they've changed and they would always tell me there's no way they can change like they're not the kind of people to change yeah. and just that very hateful you know it's like viewpoint yeah and that person did struggle with you know depression and, and anxiety and things like that yeah. but they like i said they took it out on others yeah instead of treating themselves first because once you can understand yourself better and treat yourself right you understand that others also deserve to be treated that same way and it helps you gain empathy yeah so what what are some ways you found to love yourself some of the ways i found to love myself is to do what i enjoy doing like i enjoy doing the podcast i enjoy editing and doing art that way I love because I struggle with depression and anxiety and all that and what, how I deal with it is and how I can kind of like learn to love myself even better is by even listening to the jokes and stuff I make while doing and the stuff I talk about while doing this, sh- this show and doing our gaming stuff is just enjoying every moment of it and I don't know it's just I just I don't really focus on myself that much so it's kind of a weird question for you to ask yeah so well I didn't used to do that as well it took going through therapy and things like that for me to realize like yeah I need need to back away from everybody else don't try and help everybody else I need to help myself first like if, if I can also help other people's while helping myself that's great but 
I can't leave myself in the in the mud. Exactly. That's why I clean everybody else off. You know, I need to clean myself off first. Yeah, and I so that I can clean others off I've, even better. I've, I've grown up in that environment where it's just like you focus on the people instead of yourself. Yeah, and a lot of people I feel like do grow up in that environment where you are taught other people are the first priority, and yeah. that's not necessarily a. You should be selfless in that way i think everybody needs to be more selfless and see other people are also a high priority but i don't think anybody should constantly think everybody else is a high priority right. higher priority you can be themselves. selfless but not too selfless yeah because if you're too selfless you're going to burn yourself out you're going to hurt yourself and yeah. um that's definitely not healthy and that'll stop you from being able to help other people and you know yeah because i've run into a couple of times where I've burnt myself out by yeah. helping out so many people at once and it bit me pretty hard yeah and so like there'll be times you can even like tell in some of the videos where I was like kind of laying back for an episode or something like that like where it's just like it's getting too much for me I just need to like back off yeah so yeah I but, um yeah I, yeah so, so yeah I, I constantly make jokes and like I kind of have been getting to the point I used to do it a lot but I would just sit in the room and I'd just listen to music I or listen music, to podcasts or music, anything else like that sorry I didn't mean to cut you off that's no, okay um, um, music is definitely a really good therapy uh, I had a friend in high school who when starting to go to therapy the therapist like asked if they had anything that they were using to help cope with anxiety and actually did prescribe music like listen to music yeah. and um that really helped my friend whenever they felt an anxiety attack coming on or any just in, in general anxiety they would put their headphones in and they would listen to the music that calms them down and it worked for them they didn't yeah. need to put on any kind of medications or anything like that and yeah, that's what i do that's I, what some people do i also just find movies and different stuff that i enjoy and i even a lot of times i talk to myself like if I have to go out and do something, like if I want to go on a hike or just do something, I would like to typically just talk to myself and just like listen to music and like mm -hmm. try to like figure out what's going on in my own life and stuff like that to try to figure myself out and kind of respect the ways that I do stuff instead of how everyone kind of pushed me to be. Yeah, and I think talking to yourself, like, a lot of people see that as, oh, that person's crazy or they, you know, they're weird to talk to themselves, but talking to yourself is, like, it's a, it's, I've seen a lot of people with processing disorders use that as a, a coping way to deal with situations, like, you're preparing yourself you know how like cities have to do disaster relief preparations yeah. where they have to prepare for anything to happen well that's kind of what our brains are trying to do for ourselves when we talk to ourselves we're running ourselves through conversations or through instances or scenarios that might come up because our brain is our own country and we're all of the government officials and the people yeah so it's us trying to like walk through okay, how would I respond if somebody were to say this with, to me? And, you know, you can't always determine what somebody's going to say to you, but sometimes with some people, I know I've had some toxic friends in the past where it was very easy to predict what they would say. Yeah, then also it, with that and with everything, it's that kind of common splitting dimension type situations where... If you say, like, yeah, like the whole episode of Community that we watched and with the whole episode where they are deciding about who should answer it all for the pizza guy. And one of the characters takes a six-sided dice and is just like, okay, whoever the number like, corresponds with that person, they go and get it. And the whole episode is following the different probabilities. Yeah. Of, like, if this person goes out and gets the pizza this will happen yeah and all the different possibilities we, yeah that is kind of what we're doing is we're walking ourselves th through the different person that, like the different dimensions that yeah can, like that could probabilities i mean probabilities of things that could happen um so yeah listening to music talking to yourself that's definitely a good way to um love yourself and self-treat yourself and music is kind of mixed because you can listen to music that can can make you worse yeah 
when I found music that I can make me well too. Yeah. <laughs> um, then also just doing what you enjoy to do, like whether that be art and or editing or doing something and if that qualifies having someone else be there um try to figure out how you can d- pursue that without someone else there yeah yeah um so did, did doing that stuff help you at all with learning to love other people better or yeah it, um have you always been the kind of person to not really be judging or anything like that because a lot of people are they grow up when i'm a very judging person but as they grow older they get less and less judging without sounding rude um when i was a kid i was extremely judgmental i think all kids are well that, (laughs) that was up until like i think high school yeah, I mean, I, was I like would that. say most kids are, so yeah. I don't think that's a rude but I was also thing to say. Kind of like that very religious person as well. It's just like, if you don't believe the same way, like, how dare you? Oh, like, you were the kind of religious person where you're, like, saying to anybody that doesn't believe the religion yeah. you're part of, you're telling them they're going to go to hell kind of thing. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And it took me up until high school to realize like yeah no that's wrong yeah like you shouldn't you have no right especially, to tell somebody if they're going to hell or not especially with me having a disability like i shouldn't think about that yeah like, you shouldn't judge people yeah so it took me to pass that and to like have friends and like other people come from different backgrounds to have me realize like yeah maybe i should kind of stop doing this and yeah. focus on it and then like one of the YouTubers I watched that inspired me to do this channel after he committed suicide around my birthday like it kind of also struck that nerve of maybe I shouldn't be like this and and also it hit me like maybe I am taking out my anger and my depression and depressing thoughts and stuff like that onto other people instead of focusing on myself yeah and it took me like doing meditative stuff and doing art things and kind of pushing to help more people to get past that point where i can be like yeah i can actually like start to learn to love myself and love and respect the others yeah i i was i would say i was also a judgmental kid um but it, it was kind of like i would judge very little tiny things i would never like judge people on big things like i was always a very like accepting person yeah um there would be times where like i was taught not to be accepting to certain people but i didn't understand why i shouldn't be but i didn't accept them because that's what i was taught not to do does that make sense yeah 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 but then like after i got older it was that thing of like yeah no i i should be accepting to these people (laughs) um but yeah it was almost the opposite for me where i I had to end a very toxic... I ended one toxic friendship and went right into another one. Mm Mm-hmm. But at that point, I had learned, like, what a toxic friend acts and like and things like that, so I was able to be more prepared to deal with that one. But I left a toxic friendship because it was really bad for my mental health, like, extremely bad. I had lost, like... I I couldn't get joy out of anything anymore, that kind of very bad. Yeah, and... Unfortunately um, for me, I hit that one of those senior in high school. I hit that. Yeah, I hit that. Uh, my s- junior year of high school. Um, and part of my senior year, I spent... So I ended that friendship in the summer, and then, like, the toxic friendship I was in with another friend only lasted a few more months. Like, about six more months. Mm-hmm because that friend was very there is no way you know i would try and give reasons for why that person treated me wrong to the the other friend and they would always say no like you're not a bad person for having done like that thing to them like they're a worse person for having treated you like this you know and they they pushed that toxic mean mentality on me and you know, I, I got pulled into that and I started acting a lot more mean hearted and mean spirited and things like that. And it took losing a, a very important family member a few months later that made me 
turn my attitude around and realize, like, what's the point of hating people? Because that family member spent every day helping people. He was a, um, a counselor. And, you know, seeing that family member, you know, they died. The last thing they saw me as was a mean <laughs> spirited person it's that thing of like I didn't make them proud and it's that thing of like I don't want the last memory people have of me is being that mean hearted you know person yeah what's the point because all I'm gonna do is hurt more people and that's when I decided like I'm not gonna be like I'm definitely not gonna be like that anymore like what's the point of being being vengeful and things like that towards people that hurt you instead of forgiving them right you know, because it's just going to cause more pain for both people. Yeah, because to everyone, it takes that push. Exactly. And unfortunately, a lot of the times it deals with a loved one, a someone that you look up to dying. Yeah. With what happened to the both of us. Yeah. Um, and I mean, like, I that, that family member, I don't think, I don't think they knew that I was that vengeful person but it was that thing of like I wish I could have been a better person I wanted to be more like him yeah and I wasn't anything like him at that moment and being a religious person it was also that thing of like if I keep acting this way like because of how good and how like much good he was putting in the world that he did it was that thing of like if I keep acting this way I'm not gonna get to see him ever again right you know from like also a religious standpoint so it was that thing that turned me around like I can't I'm not gonna be mean anymore because would I want somebody to treat me like this right you know because that's also what it takes is I was also bullied a lot so that made me realize like I wouldn't want anybody else to feel this way so you know but yeah I I um kind of get back on track the way I I've loved myself and things like that is I did start going to therapy and I need to get back into that but yeah um one of them I might join you with that as well yeah um but yeah i i started going to therapy and started working through a lot of my pain and a lot of my problems and i feel like that's the main reason why a lot of people are so cruel nowadays is they have so much pain and anger and they don't know how to deal with it and they have it's seen as a a lot of social media stuff that they can take it out on but yet they don't really instead of working through it yeah they're able to just express their pain and anger instead of working through it Mm -hmm. for some people that's how you work through it but that's not a healthy way to work through it because you're putting that anger and that pain out there for more people to be you know exposed to. that's why in the beginning of the episode i was just like yeah you can take it on what you love to do and transform that anger into love and respect yeah yeah and and if you enjoy like helping other people you can find that medium of like what we do um find that medium where you can actually help people and also help yourself yeah yeah and i um you know i i started trying to always make people's I mean I've always tried to make my friends days and other people's days by posting funny memes and things like that or telling jokes um but yeah uh working with a therapist definitely helped with working through a lot of the pain and things like that and it made me able to work through my own pain so that way I could help others work through theirs Mm -hmm. so I could tell them you're not alone and there is a way you can work through it because I was able to work through it yeah um, you know, and it's that thing where a lot of people see therapy as a, like, kind of a cowardly thing to do. Like, you're not strong enough. You're weak that, if you uh, have to go to therapy. It's also that thing that a lot of people believe that therapy is like, oh, it's all in your head. Just forget about it and just move on. Yeah. Well, that, yeah. that's what also people talk about depression and anxiety like that yeah well. they tell you oh it's all in your head you just need to move on from it it's but like, it's not true though. yeah like i mean yeah it's all in my head but it needs to get out of my head yeah and it's also <laughs> i that, can't just get it out it's you like know? also people like me that have super palsy like yeah it's affecting my brain so it's, yeah it's not just a mental thing it's a physical thing yeah. too and yeah i mean yeah, but I, I've known a lot of people see therapy and counseling as something you have to do if you're weak. So yeah. a lot of people who have that kind of, like, 
toxic masculinity mindset of like a lot you of can't times show it weakness. is yeah because i've heard a lot of guys i've had a lot of guys tell me they they will not go to therapy when i've suggested they do it because they needed it um because you know they were telling me things that it's like oh you are in a lot of pain you really need to work with that this out with somebody they would say that's for weak people i can't be weak i have to be strong and it's like that's not how it works you have to be it, it's it is taking strength to go to therapy it takes a lot of strength to go to therapy and it's not you're not showing weakness by wanting to talk it out with someone else because exactly. even guys talking out with other guys yeah and it's the thing it was like going to therapy gives you a person that's impartial that you can talk it out with mm-hmm. you know so definitely like i would suggest a lot more people get get into therapy um you know <laughs> yeah instead of doing kind of what i did in my whole entire life was just like kind of push myself into pop culture and like learning about different stuff and then not really focusing on myself until i really wanted to push to stop this channel yeah and then like it was kind of like that switch of like yeah i need to stop and actually like focus on this now yeah so so, so what have you done going on to like the we kind of talked about how we respect have learned to respect others through or not respect but love others through loving ourselves you know it, it takes loving yourself to love others yeah um because you need that empathy mm-hmm. yeah. but it's kind of the same with respect like how how would you say you st- i mean you kind of already said how you started respecting people yeah like i the different people i met and different friends i had and everything else like that like i learned that not everyone came down the same path i did and not everyone came down like the path that like the stereotypes used um there's a lot of in between there's there's the state quote-unquote stereotypes and you just kind of for me personally i had to think like okay if that person was in my shoes how would they react yeah and yeah. no it's that thing of like that's kind of a cliche thing to say but it's true yeah and I don't think I mean yeah some people may call it cliche but I don't think it really is yeah well I like to say cliche just so people can yeah yeah <laughs> um but yeah like I uh, when started having that mindset of like if how would that person react to different situations and different stuff that they had to go through but through my eyes yeah yeah, I, um... I know that also is, like, a kind of, like, a selfish way of thinking. I wouldn't really In a think sense. So. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's a really selfish way of thinking. It, it's... It's more selfless because you're thinking... You're not thinking, how would I deal with this? You're thinking, how would all these other people deal with this? Right. And, like, it took me to do that and also, like, a lot of other stuff to realize, like, yeah, I, I should not be like this i should respect how they are yeah and what they like and like who they are as a person yeah i mean i was raised to love and respect everybody yeah um there was still some some you know yeah like oh you you shouldn't praise people for acting this way or being this way or things like that you know there was still prejudice there when i was being raised but i also had the um I mean, living in a bigger city, I had the advantage of being exposed to people from all kinds of backgrounds from the beginning of my life, so... And that was kind of my issue, was my family moved a lot, and it wasn't until I was three or four until we moved to Troy. And Troy, if you know it, it's a pretty small town. So... It's kind of that town of everyone knows who each other are and everyone knows it's it's like daily little secrets and stuff like that. So, and everyone kind of has that same walk of life here. Yeah. Even though it's like tweaked just a little bit. It's still just about the same. Yeah. And it didn't take me until I started going to conventions and didn't start until I started going to conventions and to college and like getting to know more people. Yeah. To see, like, yeah, not everyone's, like, from my own hometown. Yeah. 
But yeah, um, I, you know, grew up with a lot more people from different backgrounds around me and having, you know, uh, friends and family who are part of like the LGBTQIA plus community. Same. It, you know, it, it's, it's. I had a lot of like, friends in, in the community. It was that thing where I, I got so kind of disgusted with some people, how they would just stop talking to friends or family if they like came out. Right. And it's kind of like that person hasn't changed. They just like a same thing now. Yeah, it's not maybe even just now. A lot of people wait years before coming out. You know, yeah. A lot of people know they the that they have those feelings from the get go. Yeah, and... well, I said now because of like in the family members or the friends' perspective, like oh. Yeah, it's like oh they like this now, and it's kind of like that's what always confused me. It's kind of like from everyone I've known they always had those feelings exactly and so why would you it's like that person has never changed yeah like i've heard people saying like i can't believe like they're like this now and it's kind of like what do you mean now they've always (laughs) they're still the same person like it's like people judge and identify a person based off of one tiny characteristic or one tiny like piece of information and they're Mm -hmm. like oh you you're you're a completely different person now and it's like how does that one to you new tiny characteristic change who that person is right like they're they didn't change <laughs> if anybody's the per- people you know getting angry that have changed but yeah like it took having friends and family who are part of that community to make me be more open to that community and things like that and for me to be more like openly loving and accepting of that community yeah like i guess is what i'm trying to say like you know i i was kind of like i'm not gonna stop loving and caring about my friends and family just because they like a certain gender or they feel a certain way like they're still like that's still my best friend (laughs) yeah like i had a friend who transitioned in high school and i was the first person that they told and they was like how do you think my family would react and i was had that heavy burden of like, yeah, I th- feel like they would react like this, but you gotta respect them. Yeah. And, and if they don't wanna be a part of your life, then. I've had to have that conversation too with friends where they'd be like, yeah, I, I mean, I. It, it wasn't usually in the same conversation where they would come out to me, yeah. but it was the thing where they'd say, how would you think? You know, I'm pretty sure I know how my family would react, but how do you think? Right. And it's that and thing of like, like I, they're still gonna with some of my friends. It was they're still gonna love you, but they're gonna they're gonna you know have a talk with you, a long one. That's gonna be like, that's like, why. Why I, are you acting this uh, way? And that's like that's that. why I basically told him, and like I told that person, I was like, yeah, I, I'm still gonna love you, even though you are transitioning. Yeah, it doesn't change who you are. It's just yeah, and you're going through a different walk of life, walk of life now. Yeah, and but yeah, it's just that thing where it's like some friends I've had to say, yeah, don't don't tell them because Mm -hmm. I think you're right they are they would probably kick you out and because you know that's your only form of resources right now that's not the safest thing for you right you know but other friends I would say like go for it they're still gonna well not go for it I would say it's up to you they're still gonna love you but they're probably going to be upset yeah because they're not gonna I know they're not gonna understand that's what I meant by go for it (laughs) yeah so it's kind of like do whatever you want but I'm not I'm not gonna suggest one thing or the other Mm mm-hmm you know but yeah um i've also just i've i've seen growing up i saw a lot of the people i loved and care about like a lot of my majority of my friends growing up were people of color so i grew up watching them be bullied for that and be like you know yeah. stereotyped and things like that for that and that also helped me at a younger age, I guess, like open my eyes and realize like, hey, this is wrong. Like, this is not okay for people to treat people that way. Yeah. And I feel like growing up in a town like Troy probably wasn't as open to that mindset and thinking pattern. Uh, no, I had a few friends that were of color and they, it was kind of a mixed bag. Like a lot of, sometimes they would get bullied because of it and sometimes they wouldn't. Yeah. It just depends on, like, who knew who. Yeah, and I'm not saying, like, my friends were constantly bullied. It was just that thing where, like, that was a thing that happened. Yeah. They would be, you know, so, like, at a younger age, I realized, like... Yeah, that's why yeah. I was kind of trying to a, put it. was like, yeah, like, yeah, it does happen, but it's just, like... Yeah, yeah, like, in my case, it was that thing where it was, like, 
at a much younger age, I, I was never taught to hate somebody based off of their skin color or to treat yeah. somebody differently based off of their skin color. That was still my friend, yeah. no matter I what a, color their skin was. They yeah. were still my friend. Like, I have a friend that she is basically my sister, even though we haven't talked in a while. Um, I treat her like family. Yeah. Every single time. Yeah, but, like, was it any different for you? Was it harder to get out of that mindset? Did you grow up at all, think, like, being taught to think racistly I guess yeah or, or were, were maybe not by your parents but by like other family members or family friends were they all kind of you know they had racist stereotypes they pushed on people and things like that I'm not not really that comfortable to, to say that well that's but, what I'm saying like pe- it wasn't necessarily family it was just people you were around yes, growing up yeah yeah because I know p- so, there's some people in this town because I was trying to like put it in the nicest way I possibly can. yeah because we like I said yeah. like I'm not saying certain people like I'm not saying my friends or family members names who have like come out or yeah, who are people of color there was you know a lot of people that <laughs> I knew unfortunately that were racist and that or or I still are and it was that thing like but for me being young age and like having friends of all colors I kind of saw the past and I was just like I didn't blame really tell them like you're wrong you shouldn't think like that but I just constantly ignore them yeah. I still ignore them whenever yeah. they make <laughs> racist comments but like I yeah 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 that's what I was asking is like I know I didn't grow up with that at all yeah I mean, when when I got older, I, I definitely heard more people saying, even, like, the kind of slightly racist, like, like, well, you know, they act that way because, you know, they're, you know, black. Yeah. And people talking like that, like, the, the subtle racism, not the, we hate them <laughs> because they're black, you know. Yeah, I've heard um, all kinds. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately. But I, I didn't grow up really hearing it that much. I heard it more when I was, like, in middle school, you know, older. Yeah. And even when I heard it when I was a little younger than that, and even around then, I ignored it because... Yeah, I've ignored you know, it all my life because um, of growing up in a small town like this. Like, Yeah, well, that's what I was trying to ask. Kind of is, adapt like, with it. It, it can be hard because, like, when you grow up surrounded by people who are majority to push even the subtle racism, you know, you that gets ingrained in you. Yeah. And it makes you think a certain way. So I was just kind of curious, like, did you have to push yourself out of that or were you just always like, no, yeah. I'm going to ignore them? I was always like that. Like, like you were going to ignore them? Yeah. Okay. I was just kind of curious because, you know, it's that thing of you did grow up in a different, and not just in a smaller town, yeah. but, you know, and... <laughs> Then also it was because of my aunt, like, she is still basically a mother to me, how a lot of stuff I know now is because it's through her, like, how to love and respect yourself and how to love and respect others no matter who they are, yeah. because she is a kid that's gay and, like, has tons of friends of the different colors and different sexual orientations and different religions and stuff like that, so it she helped me like adapt to like you shouldn't think about how other people think or believe in this town you should follow what you believe yeah and i i mean i definitely um am very proud of her for raising you that way yeah because that is definitely and she actually was the person that introduced me <laughs> to like the person i consider as a sister Oh, really? Yeah, because she had lived literally right across the hall from me. Oh. And, like, we went to school together, but I never really talked with her until my aunt actually became friends with her and her mom. Oh. So. Sweet. Yeah. But, yeah, um, I don't really know where to go from here. Yeah. Yeah, just, like, there, you know, one, one big way, we've kind of just been talking about the ways we've dealt with stuff but one big way you guys can love and respect others we've kind of pushed the yourself like you need to do yourself first therapy self-treating are all different ways to love yourself yeah and if it doesn't come naturally if it comes naturally then you know you don't have to worry about exactly. it exactly some people they don't deal with mental illness problems so they don't it does it doesn't come with you know it comes a lot Especially, easier to love themselves I'm not trying to quote how my mother but like we Ohioans like to push down our problems. Yeah, we and I've had friends who would bottle <laughs> things up yeah. until they exploded and then they would be screaming at you for no reason and it's like, but once you got them to calm down, 
they you would find out oh it's been this thing that's and then this thing and all these different things over the past like six months but like and finally they blew up over it <laughs> you know because one little thing just overfilled just that messed bottle. them up man yeah and it just it <laughs> broke them and made them explode with every you know about everything that's been going wrong but that yeah. they've been keeping quiet about so yeah definitely don't bottle things up no that also um, um like i always say like find whatever you are interested in and do it yeah um but yeah one way you can love and respect others is you you gotta get empathy you gotta understand that like a lot of people's hate against other people like other groups of people is usually fueled by they don't understand like like with the what's going on in our country right now where so many people are upset they're like i've heard i heard somebody say that black people don't want equal rights they want more rights and it's kind of like this person doesn't understand that they do want equal rights they don't understand that they don't have equal rights yet Mm -hmm. you know and equal treatment so it's that thing where a lot of people are just ignorant Mm -hmm. and that you know ignorance fuels hate (laughs) and And you gotta you gotta teach yourself you gotta learn you gotta and and sadly as americans that's what we've always been and that's that's kind of like what we grew up to be is ignorant yeah yeah, that's a, that's a stereotype is ignorant Americans. Yes. Um, but yeah, like you you got to get empathy and understand that maybe the reason you don't like that per- group of people or that person isn't because they've done anything wrong or done anything to hurt you. It's maybe because you just don't understand them and you think that what they're doing is an attack on you. Right. Cuz that's what I see from a lot of people who both hate on people of color and the lgbtqia plus community is they don't understand them yeah. they're different from them and because they're different that makes them upset mm-hmm. and it's that thing of like if you could understand that when it comes down to it that person's not that much different from you no. you would be less upset so just like you gotta you know mm-hmm you do have to love and respect yourself to be able to love and respect others, but you also need, it takes that extra step of getting empathy and, you know, making sure that you're being conscious of what other people are going through before judging them. Yeah, and also understand where people are coming from before you judge them as well. Yeah, that, the whole thing, the whole spiel of, of where they're coming from, what they've been through, what they're currently going through, right. you know, all that. It doesn't um, matter. As long as you can respect them, as long as I can respect you, hey, yeah. might as well. You know? Yep. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to add? Uh, I can't think of anything. I just, I know we really want to push, you know, just get rid of all the hate. Yeah. Because hate only fuels hate. The only way you can get rid of it is through love and respect. Yeah. And acceptance. Violence doesn't end violence. It just like escalates it. Yeah. That also goes with hate and a lot of the kind of this bad spirited. I guess you can call it that. Ways like it doesn't pu- push down. It just makes it feel even farther. Yeah. 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 I, I, that was a good episode. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, we're gonna. I know in a couple of weeks we're gonna talk about um, history of Stonewall. I don't think we know what we're doing next week yet. We do. We do? I, yeah. Um, we're going to be doing the summer solstice. Yeah, I was about to say, those are going to kind of come close to each other because mm-hmm. um, summer solstice is coming up. Yeah, it's going to be the 21st. Yep. I was about to say, like, isn't it, isn't the season change always the 21st? Yes. Yeah, because I know it's the 21st for spring, or for summer, and I know it's the 21st for winter. Yeah, actually... I have no idea what we're going to talk about next week, but the 21st, the weekend, weekend we're going to be talking about the summer solstice, and then that next week when we're we'll talking about Stonewall. Mm-hmm. The... The riots. Yeah. yeah, so we don't know what we're doing next week. Um, so... On the 19th, we're going to be talking about the summer solstice, and then on the 26th, we're going to be talking about Stonewall. Yes. And then in the beginning of July, we're going to be talking about, of course... That falls on your birthday. Yeah, it does. So I guess we can talk about the 4th... Yeah, yeah, you are the 4th of July. Just me. 
We can talk about how John Adams didn't want to get out of bed on July 2nd. Stupid. He should have just died. That would have made that made better. <laughs> Jeez, Gwen. <laughs> if John Adams had just died, then the 4th of July would have... The, the Independence Day would have been on my birthday, guys. How, how dare you? So, s screw you, John Adams. You ruined my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> she says that as a joke. Not... I'm not joking. I'm dead serious. <laughs> Gwen. <laughs> it's... Stop. He's dead. It doesn't matter. Exactly. He was like one of the. Well, he wasn't that bad of a president. People think he was horrible. He was the second president. Yeah, that's why everybody thought he was so bad because he couldn't match, like, him pair up. And couldn't square up to George Washington. Yeah, George is just like, just try your best. And he's like, I am. You can do it, buddy. He's like, I am trying. They all hate me. They wish I was you. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson just Adams. like sitting in the corner just like I want to take you over <laughs> oh just you wait a few more years buddy and I'm gonna get you <laughs> <laughs> what did I miss but yeah how many so, Hamilton references can we came oh, into no, the last five minutes <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah um yeah we have no idea what we're talking about yeah so you can, you can comment down below or... if, yeah if you guys have anything you want us to talk about I, we could do a little a little bit of a history thing um on pokemon go this the summer of 2016 serious? wait was that 2016 it was the summer of 20 it's 2016 summer the streets are flooded with people. The parks are flooded with people. The world is flooded with people. They've all left their homes. I got it. For one thing, and one thing only, Pokemon. Go. I got it five minutes uh, after it came out, by the way, in America. You did? Yeah. My phone was not like a new enough model to be able to have that, Oof. but my sister's was. So that ticked me off pretty bad. So I would always play on their phone, but then that phone died. My phone died. So I got to get a new one. So then I could finally get Pokemon Go. So I got it like, oh gosh, I got it like a uh, couple, when did it come out? Like 2015? No, early 2016. Yeah. I got it like midsummer, 2016, mm -hmm. like around August. Nice. September is so I got it like at the end of all the hype and then everybody was just like oh you're playing that and it's like yeah I just got it okay like all my friends would do Pokemon Go walks and I would just walk next to them asking if I could catch one Pokemon and then I finally got it and they're like oh yeah we don't do that anymore I uninstalled the app and it's like what <laughs> see I still have it I just yeah don't play it that often but that's we don't have to talk about Pokemon Go. That was just the little bit that we tried to but do. But that might be next week. Uh, if you lovelies can think about something. Yeah, unless you guys think about something. Else. Yeah, I might think about something else better than that. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Well, thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> uh, if you enjoyed this episode, now this is for. Actually, just let's change it up. Let's change it up a bit. Okay, okay. hear me oh, out. What's going on? Um, I don't like change. Because this is a podcast. Mm. It's okay. You bet we'll still say the same, okay? Okay. I'm just going to change the... Make sure you leave a rating down below how we did. Or if you enjoy our show, please leave a rating down below. And make sure you leave a... No, that's you. Say, leave a comment down below. That's what a rating is. Leave a comment down below? Yeah. Okay. Well, on Apple, it's like... Oh, is it different? You can do comments and ratings? Yes. What? Yeah, you can do that now. <laughs> My brain just exploded, guys. I'm amazed. Yeah, leave a comment down below. Let us know. Let us know what to talk about next week because yeah. the world is burning and my I'm off my meds. I've been off my meds for like six months now. Yeah, we get, we talked about space last week, so we yeah we got enough space talk for a while. Yeah, but yeah. My my world is burning. I'm off my meds, so my brain is just um. I hope you could hear that. Yeah, <laughs> I was kind of quiet, but uh, yeah, my brain's just it's fried, so I can't think of ideas. <laughs> it's okay. I'll, I'll think of something. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> Anyways, um, also don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Or uh, ring the bell. Ding. To stay notified for uploading. Uh, yeah. Y you want to say it with me? Sure. No matter who you are. No matter what, what you, you do. do. Love is. I messed it up. Dang it. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs>
no matter who you are, no matter what you are, no matter what you do, love and respect yourself, also love and respect others, and yeah, hope you have a fantastic day, or a prideful day, whatever day you're yeah, listening. Yeah, prideful day. Well, Ooh. it's pride month. <laughs> Get some rainbows and stuff. You know, I totally forgot about it being pride month until, like... You did? The world is burning, it's okay. Yeah, until, like, as we was leaving... No, as I was, like, heading back to your house yesterday... Oh, wow. I was just like... Oh, Wait yeah, a it minute. is. It's Pride Month. It's June. <laughs> so, yeah, be prideful no matter what day, whatever day you're listening to this to. And, uh, yeah, next time we're on the cast. Bye. Bye.